Greetings everyone, Seven from London here again. Um, I thought it might be a good idea if I should share some more documents, court documents uh, from my case. Um, given the nature of all the stalking and all the th threats and bullying that's going on by a man, Richard Hanna, who was part of the case, <clears throat> and he's trying to silence the truth and obviously with any case it's who's telling the truth um, we have to establish that you can't just tell a pack of lies in the face of a whole body of evidence and try to make those lies stick and so for the purpose of today's video i thought it would be a good idea just to set the record really straight so that if anybody you know um sees his videos or, or comes across this man you know who you're dealing with you need to know what kind of person you're dealing with sadly there are some people that um, have no integrity and will do anything to not face the consequences of their crimes and in this situation that's exactly what we're dealing with somebody who knows they've done a catalogue of wrongs, <clears throat> a catalogue of crimes, and what he's trying to do is make himself into the victim and make the victim into the bad guy. And so, for the purpose of this video, I felt it would be a good idea if I share some of my court documents, some things that haven't been online, because there's quite a body of um, documents if you go to the appendices in the Farrell report there's a there's a link a tab there which has some witness statements but it doesn't have everything so <clears throat> as some of you know I took proceedings against nine individuals sorry ten individuals and corporations of which Richard Hanna is one of them and currently he's um, aggressively viciously, maliciously targeting me <clears throat> and stalking me because of the fact that um, he doesn't want to face the music, he doesn't want to pay back the money that he owes me and in order to do that he needs to discredit me you know and to make it look like everything that I'm saying is a pack of hogwash which he himself knows everything I'm saying is a fact, it's a fact Every single thing I've said is a fact. I wouldn't come on here. I don't have time. You know, I really don't have time. I've already been to court. He had the opportunity to go to court. He didn't go to court. He thought that by doing his uh, bullying and threatening routine would um, make me cower away and back off, which I didn't do. Obviously, um, anybody who's seen my videos in the past will know that um, I continued and I proceeded with my case and I won and that's what the courtroom audios are about now obviously there are two tiers to this particular case because part of it is civil and part of it is criminal and uh, the part that went into court that I'm about to show you is to do with the civil case well it actually it's evidence for both but um, I'm going to show you some documents that haven't been online. I'm going to post them online so that everybody can read them for themselves. Um, in particular, uh, witness statements that haven't been viewed. Um, so I want to do that today. But before I go into the witness statements, I will share some of the court documents that show categorically that I won my case and that this man is basically he's what you call a vexatious person who is trying to put the genie back in the bottle and it's not going to work it's not going to work he's trying to terrorize me he's trying to terrorize others he's harassing us and he's doing it on a level that is of obsession but this is nothing new. This has been going on, as I said, for 15 years. 
The only difference now is that it's public. He's doing it publicly and he's hoping that um, he will threaten me and terrorize me so that I will be in a state of fear and I won't speak up and stand up for myself. But I don't do fear. As everybody who knows me, I do not do fear. I do not fear any of these people. They have my money and they need to pay it back. I want my money back. They need to credit and pay me for my work which they've stolen. Okay? They've got my money in their bank accounts and I want that money back. Whatever they put out there means nothing to me. It's just a pile of crap. Okay? It's just bullshit for, um, I mean, for idiots, really. Nobody's really going to be pay attention to somebody like that. You know, um, if he was telling the truth, he wouldn't need to have all these different identities and using different identities to leave comments on other people's channels. I mean, the whole thing that this man is doing is a testament to his own behavior. It shows you. I mean, who leaves 25 comments with different people's identities? Who does that? You know, sadly, there's some seriously sick people out there. I mean, some of you must have heard about the case where on Guy Fawkes Day, they actually found people creating effigies of the people that died in Grenfell Tower. As many of you know, I had uh, my aunt Marjorie Vital and my cousin Ernie Vital died in Grenfell Tower. And the idea that people would create an effigy <coughs> Uh, of a tower and, and, you know, symbolize burning the people all over again. It's just sickening and it's just indicative of the kind of mad, sick people that there are, are out there. You know, it's just so twisted. But this is where we're at. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the type of world we're living in where people, they've lost their consciousness, they've got no integrity, they've got no dignity, they don't care who they hurt, they don't care who they lie about. It's just, it's off the charts. It's off the charts and I'm sick of these kind of people. I'm totally sick of these kind of people. And, I, you know, they're not going to get away with it with me. You know, you cannot rob me and terrorize me for 15 years and think that you're going to get away with it because you write a pack of threatening bullshit, okay? It doesn't wash with someone like me, okay? So let's get that straight. All right, so I want to show you, because there's so many court bundles that were from the previous case, as some of you know, I'm also in case, uh, sorry, I'm in court at the moment as well. Um, with the Housing Association, who has basically facilitated criminals to harass me at my home address. And we've seen last week Richard Hanna put my address on the internet. However, I don't actually, I'm not staying there because, you know, what's the point? I'm being literally harassed in the place. That's why they sent me all these um alarms now for my windows. They know that I'm telling the truth. The police know that I'm telling the truth. And they know that I'm a legitimate, genuine victim. Um, so anyway, this, what we have in front of you here is, oh, this is um, witnesses that were part of the case. Let me see if I can get it. So I'm going to be reading some of these witness statements so that you can have a listen that it's, it's not this is not a case of my word against Richard Hammond there were 14 witnesses and he knows this okay <clears throat> the other thing is before I go into any of that I want to show you that this was sworn on oath as an affidavit every single bundle that I produce for the courts this is what we call the court bundle <clears throat> this one in particular has um, witness statements and all the witness statements and all the documentation that went into court was sworn on affidavit. That means under the penalty of perjury, okay? If you swear an affidavit in the court and you're lying, that is penalty of, you know, serious, serious um, consequences. 
So everything produced here has been through the courts and has actually um, made up part of the case, <clears throat> which is what the judge saw, and this is why I won my case. Because obviously those courtroom audios that many of you have listened to are generated from the evidence. Okay, and um, so I think it's a good idea to show you. Obviously, there's so much. I mean, we're talking right here. I've got all together, there's something like nine bundles, nine of these. But this one contains witness statements. Whoops. This one contains witness statements, and I'll show you them on the screen. Um, this one, whoops, this one. Again, this was part of the court case. That this is the court. Oh, sorry. There's the court reference number. I'll read it out to you. It's A three two zero zero six nineteen sixty seven. That was my court case reference number. <clears throat> and this is one of my bundles. This just contains evidence. All of this, what you see here, is all evidence. Oops. It's all paginated. Whoops. Let's see if we can get to some of the pages. But all of these here have contained evidence. Okay. It's all separated, and, but it's a lot of evidence. So when you hear those courtroom audios, they're generated from evidence. This is another bundle containing evidence. Evidence from various witnesses, not just myself. Um, 14 witnesses and myself produced evidence, okay, of what was going on. So all of this is all evidence, okay. Another bundle. And as I said, all of these bundles, they're old now because we're talking 2006, right? But you can see this one too was sworn. All of the bundles that you see, they've all been sworn under oath and penalty of perjury. Okay? So just in case you see any bullshit written by this man, Richard Hanna, or anybody else, I'm doing this for the record so that you can see it's all true. There's another bundle that you can see. This is born as, as marked as an exhibit of affidavit. So as much as the witness testimony, testimonies were sworn under penalty of perjury, so were the affidavits with the evidence itself. Okay, so um, before I read some of these statements, I'm going to show you some exhibits, okay? Okay, this is uh, the index of all the witnesses um, and their witness statements. And uh, I'll just show you, it's the contents of the bundle that was sworn. Um, as I said, it was sworn on the penalty of perjury. Now, I want you to bear in mind that none of these defendants, um, in particular Richard Hanna, who is going around trying to posture um, that he is an innocent man and he's being wrongly accused and all the rest of it. None of them have uh, produced a defence and not only that he didn't turn up to court and you can hear that in the courtroom audios. Um, the reason being because of the fact that there was so much evidence against him and witnesses and obviously they managed to cover it up for quite some time and so you know all these years later it's starting to get publicity and that is posing a real problem. So his game is to try to make out that, you know, oh, let's go to court. 
Now here you will see it's already been in court with many, many witnesses here. So what is this man? You have to question yourself and ask yourself, what is this man talking about? Why has he not done anything under the penalty of perjury? You know, he had the opportunity to do so and he didn't. Okay, so that's just to show you some of the witnesses. Or so in total, in the previous case, there were 14 witnesses. And um, I'm going to read out, and you can see each witness has also produced items with exhibits, which is the evidence. You'll see next to every witness's name, they've produced exhibits, evidence. Okay, so this is not a case of um, Seven's word against this man. This is a case of there were many, many witnesses. Okay. And that's something that we have to bear in mind. So let's look at another exhibit. Okay, so I'm showing you this. A lot of you have already seen this. But um, this is what the whole debate is about. This is what all the abuse and harassment is about. These shows and all the money behind these shows. Now, and this is not even 1% of all the work that has been stolen from me by Richard Hanna and the rest of the people within the Seven Gate Crime Syndicate. Um, as you can see, it says slavery still in the UK, targeted gang stalks and terrorized for her TV shows. The horrific case of Miss Seven versus Gossage and nine others. Now, this is a source of huge embarrassment in the UK. It's huge embarrassment. And the way they are trying to get rid of it is to pretend that none of it is true okay so we're going to look at whether or not it's true it says this woman sustained a 15-year terror campaign by criminals in media for her intellectual property the case she won her case in 2006 but has not been paid or given justice terrorized 24 7 with death threats the criminal said, on my command, unleash sales hell. Okay, so let's look at whether or not this statement is true here. Okay, because what we're dealing with is facts. All right, not a pack of lies. People who don't want to be found guilty, who don't want to face the consequences, who are interested in winning something that they've already lost. Okay, their idea of winning is never paying me a penny and continuing, continuously harassing me, targeting me, stalking me, and making my life a living hell, hacking my machines to steal more of my works. That's their idea of winning, okay? But obviously, it's not my idea of somebody doing that to me. It's not going to run, okay? How whoever these people think they are, it's not going to run. All right. What we need to establish is that these people are a pack of lying filth. That's just the reality of it. Okay. And so let's look at some more evidence to say whether or not did anybody say on my command unleash sales hell. Let's look at that. Okay. This is the email from Richard Hanna. 31st of October in 2003 as you can see my name my name is here Charles Seven and what does it say he wrote in the subject on my command unleash sales hell fact he says my name is Maximus TV program selling us husband of a murdered career father of a murdered brainchild i will have my vengeance in this live event or the next fact fact this was a conspiracy of this man as you can see he says clearly husband of a murdered career father of a murdered brainchild i will have my vengeance in this live event or the next now, the event he's talking about 
is where he invites me on the 11th of November to share my format ideas with Helen Alexander, Head of Factual Broadcasting. Okay? Fact. Okay, so let's look at another document. So when this man, when you see this man writing a whole lot of lies, okay, because that's how he perceives to get out of it. Lies, bullying, threatening people to remove the evidence, and trying to turn me into the bad guy, trying to threaten me with malicious communications, to put this factual evidence of a case that has already been won and has already been in the courts. That's not malicious communications. Malicious communications is when you write lies and you actually put people's addresses on the internet, when you actually slander, smear and threaten people and bully people to take the evidence down. That is malicious communications. When you leave 25 plus comments using other people's identities to conceal all of this, that is malicious communications. Okay? That is harassment. That is cyber stalking. Okay? Apart from all the other things that have gone on where at my home address. Okay? I've been literally 15 years dealing with this madness and it has to come to a close. It has to come to a close, and it's going to come to a close by the public seeing the facts and actually saying, no, this is out of order. It's out of order what this man is doing and what these people are doing to try to conceal their criminality. Okay, so let's look at another piece of evidence. Okay, this is part one of two documents that was signed at the meeting which prove that I am the copyright owner of all the works that you saw on the poster, um, whereby my multimedia production documents were stolen at the very meeting that the, e the email that I just showed you from Richard Hanna. After that meeting, those documents, my documents were stolen and my work was sold and has become all the franchises that you see all around the world. Now, he is fully aware that I am the owner. You know, if he was an honest man, he would tell you that. But being honest means that he has to face the mu music of what he's done, and it has to pay me what he owes me. It means that they have to credit, and they have to apologize for stealing the work of a black woman living in London who is the owner of all those famous TV shows all around the world that were sold by organized crime and racketeering, okay? He has to admit that. And with that comes a whole can of worms of what he has done and they have done to keep this situation concealed. Okay, so let's read this. It says, now, this is, these are the documents that were signed for at the meeting, and you're going to see it was Richard Hanna that signed these documents. This is why he is going to for nail to try to cover this up, because he knows that the, the shit is going to hit the fan in a big way, okay? And he's trying desperately to prevent that from happening by telling a pack of lies and going around bullying people pretending that he is some sort of victim, threatening people with malicious communications and all the rest of it, when in reality, he is the person that is perpetrating malicious communications. He is the person bullying people and threatening people. Nobody is threatened. I actually have a right to literally attack these, pe these people, but I don't. What I have done, which is my right to publicize the facts of what actually transpired during, before, and after the court case and throughout the whole 15 years because this man has literally made my life a living hell and continues to do so. Now, I'm not his only victim and I would say to anybody else that is a victim of this man in any shape or form, you need to come forward. This is the time to come forward. 
Okay, so it says confidentiality and copyright statement. In consideration of our disclosing the attached information that was in the documents and documentation, this document, you by your receipt of this document, hereby acknowledge and agree that this document is valuable, confidential information and unauthorized disclosure or use of will cause me irreparable harm for which money damages may alone may be alone inadequate. Paragraph two. This document is divulged to you with the strictest confidence and neither you nor any of your servants, colleagues, officers, directors, agents or employees will divulge, disseminate, reproduce, publish, copy, communicate, disclose, exploit in any way or in any way deal with this document or any part thereof or related concepts and ideas which are in any way similar thereto in the absence of a prior written agreement between anyone, you, anyone, you may wish to consult. You will return all copies of this document in your possession immediately upon request. When I tried to, when we wrote to get the documents back, I got deference. And that's when this whole situation went off the charts. That's when my house was put under surveillance, that I was followed, I was gang stalked. This is when this whole 15 year journey began. Okay, so without prejudice, the generality of the above hereby confirm and agree that all drawings, outlines, synopsises, and the like contained in this document, including for the avoidance of doubt without any limitation, any technical information and designs are all sorry and are uh, and will remain at all times the sole exclusive property of myself. This is the the reference number of the lawyer because the lawyers were the ones that pro provided me prior to the meeting after seeing my documents with this. Now you ask yourself, would a lawyer provide that if there was nothing, if there was no documents in the first place? If there was nothing to be kept confidential, would a lawyer actually produce these copywritten statements and contracts to be signed? Of course they wouldn't. If there was nothing valuable to be protected in the first place, this would never have been given to me, would it? That's just fact, and you can see that was an exhibit, Child 7-1, it was part of my bundle, which is CS1, um, of my exhibits. So uh, I shall show you some more signed contractual documents. Okay, this is another document which was um, given to Richard Hanna at the meeting, because as I showed you, um, he set up the meeting for me to meet Helen Alexander and another man, James Manson, whom I did meet. And as I've already explained, my documents were stolen and they sold my work anyway. Um, and I'm showing you all this to show you the kind of treachery that people will engage in to take what is yours and keep it for themselves. And they will continue <clears throat> to be deceitful and, you know, terrorize you. They will do everything in their power to try to bring you down in order so that they can keep what they know is rightfully yours. Okay. Now, this particular document is what was signed by Richard Hanna. And uh, as I said, he was the one that set up the meeting on the 11th of the 11th of 2003. Um, so basically, I here disclose a treatment for a series of entitled Celebrity Fitness Show, which has basically become Strictly Come Dancing. It was a lot of shows, actually, within the documents. There are three sets of documents stolen and also um, a movie script and book script. 
And these documents were chopped up and turned into a number of productions that went public from 2000, late 2003, 2004 onwards. And so this was the first part of what I had given to Richard Hanna to sign. It was Helen him, well, they all, it was a, a, basically a collusion between all of the parties involved in the case was to steal the documentation after signing these things, to steal the documentation and um, sell it all over the world and dispose of me as quickly as possible. However, I'm a strong character and it wasn't as easy as they thought it was going to be. Now, it's very clear here that I'll show you the other part of that because there's a lot of reading material, but you can see this is an exhibit from the court case. In consideration of disclosing the nature and existence of the concept and related ideas, you hereby acknowledge and agree that such information is valuable confidential information and that unauthorized disclosure or use of which will cause us irreparable harm and significant injury for which money damages may alone be inadequate or difficult to ascertain and which is divulged to you and your signatories to this agreement in the strictest confidence. Neither you nor any of your colleagues, servants, officers, directors, agents, employees, employers, will divulge, disseminate, reproduce, record, plagiarize, copy, publish, communicate, disclose, exploit, or in any way the concept or related concepts or ideas with any concept or ideas which are similar with or without the use of the show's current working title, um, thereto in the absence of a written, and it will say on the other side, I'm fast forwarding this so that you can get an idea, of what was before the courts. Um, okay, this is the second part of the agreement. Um, it says, between you and ourselves, nor will you act in any way so such divulsion, dissemination, reproduction, publication, communication, disclosure, exploitation, or other dealing is likely from any other third parties, okay? So that's anybody that is related to, was part of the meeting, part of this, you know, the negotiation process that we were involved in. Um, if it is necessary for you to disclose any of the information disclosed to you or any of your colleagues, employers, employees, or third parties, you will first let us have written details of such colleagues, employers, employees, and third parties. And they should sign a letter of confidentiality in exactly the same terms as contained herein, or will acknowledge that they are bound by such colleagues, employers, employees, and all third th parties, shall observe all restrictions relevant to this confidentiality as if it were you. If you do not approve such disclosure, then you will not disclose the same to such colleagues, employers, employees, and third parties, and acknowledge that by breaching any of the terms of this agreement would result in legal action against yourselves and your signatories. Without prejudice to the generality of paragraph 5 above, you hereby confirm and agree that all communications between us with regards to the concept or relating thereto are to be treatment treated in the strictest confidence between you and ourselves and that all drawings, documents, outlines, synopsises and the like, including for the avoidance of doubt, without any limitation of technical information and designs, will remain at all times a sole, our sole exclusive property. Now, let's go down. So now, this Richard Hanna character signed this agreement. It was witnessed by myself and Lisa Parney, okay, who was, and I'm going to read you her statement as to whether or not this actually factually took place. Um, but here you see 
the motive behind this man's current activities of harassment, stalking, obsessive abuse, abuse, threatening, bullying people to remove this information offline. Ask yourself, why does this man have such a desperate need to remove the information offline? Ask yourself, why, if there was nothing valuable, why did he sign these contracts? Why did he sign for terms of these agreements if there was nothing valuable in the first place? Obviously, there was something valuable. And what he thought he could do, because this is a, a man who's six foot, four, six foot, I mean, he's a very huge man, okay? And he's trying to plead like he's a, some sort of a victim who's being victimized and wrongly accused. You ask yourself, why did this man put out the email on my command, unleash sales hell, invite me to a meeting, sign for valuable documents, which he knew of, he knew himself, and all of them knew these were documents were valuable. They were copyrighted documents of a multimedia platform, which I had put together with a number of TV shows and uh, innovations around dance, health, fitness, which became Strictly Come Dancing, Dancing with Stars, You Are What You Eat, 10 Years Younger. All of these productions came from me. Now, the reason why uh, You Are What You Eat and 10 Years Younger is because I look very young for my age. And that's the reason why that was part of their mockery. You know, they, as I showed you before in the past, they even gave uh, a girl my name to launch a pop band. And so this is the kind of level of abuse that these people have been engaged in. And it's standard in, in the entertainment industry. This is not something that's not unheard of. You can find case after case after case, but most people that this happens to, they don't actually have the kind of evidence that I have, which is why they are trying desperately to get rid of it. They're trying desperately. They're using all kinds of tactics. This is a man who's been through the courts, who didn't show up, and I'm going to show you evidence that judgment was against him. Okay? So, why has he showed up all these years later trying to remove something that has been in the public domain for now over a decade. Why is he trying to get rid of it? He's trying to get rid of it because it's now getting publicity and there are journalists that are interested in the case because it's a public interest case. It's linked to some key events. The mechanisms to get rid of this case is linked to key historical events. And it opens up a can of worms. When you see the money that's involved in this case, it opens up a huge can of worms that they want to be hidden behind closed doors. And that is the motive behind what we're seeing is, an, you know, abuse, threats to journalists, bullying. So let me show you some more evidence. Now, what you're seeing here is the signature of all the people that were copywriting my packages, my copyright um, packages uh, with containing my multimedia platform documents via the post office. And these are staff members that were working in the post office who knew me for a very, very long time, and they saw the whole process of me coming and, and uh, copywriting my documents because the process is, is that you put your documents into a post office package. It has to be sealed and it has to be sent back to yourself so that you can prove in a court case that you are the owner of those particular works. Now, obviously, they were doing this for years. And so when the court case came, they came forward and they 
they signed that they were aware that the stolen work was mine. It says, I can confirm that the customer, Charles Seven, has been attending this main post office in Paddington for many years now. Between the period of the 90s up until 2003, created a number of lifestyle, health, beauty and fitness, political, multimedia production documents, with several, also several music comp compositions, books and film script entitled The Walk, which I can confirm were copyrighted via Paddington Post Office on different occasions. We know this customer well and we are very sorry to learn that the copyrighted scripts and multimedia production documents that had taken her many years to create has resulted in plagiarism. Okay, this is from Post Office staff, all signed. This was part of the court case. Okay. I'm going to show you some more evidence. So as you can see, this is the post office that we just mentioned, where um, my court documents were also going to. And you will see that um, no acknowledgement and no defense received. OK, this is when I issued the proceedings against the 10 defendants, including Richard Hanna. It says, your claim was issued on the 5th of August 2004. The court sent it to the defendants by first class post on the 12th of August 2004, and it will be deemed in, to be served on the 14th of August 2004. The defendants will have until the 28th of August to reply, which, as you can see by the court, they didn't. Put. So basically, so once that is confirmed by the court, it's what you call goes into automatic default judgment. So what Richard Hanna was supposed to do at that point and all the other defendants, pay an amount into the court to satisfy. Now this is specifically to the ones that didn't respond or acknowledge the case. There were some that did acknowledge the case, but they still didn't produce a defense to the case as you hear in the courtroom audios. So you will hear, it says, this is called payment in satisfaction. So this is what Richard Hannon was supposed to do. Pay an am amount into the court to satisfy your claim. This is called payment in satisfaction. The court will notify you of the payment and you will have to decide whether to accept the amount offer. He didn't do that. He didn't do anything. Offer to pay you an amount to satisfy your claim and ask for time to pay. He didn't do that. Admit liability for your claim, but not offer the amount in satisfaction. He didn't do that either. Okay, so this was signed and it was sent, served into the court. And as you can imagine, that's when the death threats went off the charts. Okay, so I'll show you some more evidence. So as you can see with this document, um, this was filed 7th of the 9th, 2004, and it's part of the court process. So, essentially, even before I got into court, you know, I already had um, the judgment against uh, the parties that didn't. Uh, respond and didn't acknowledge the case and obviously one of them is Richard Hanna and that's why he is um, freaking out right now. He's obviously very tormented by the fact that all this is coming to light. So um, let me show you some other stuff. So just to clarify, um, we're talking not just Richard Hanna, we're also talking NTL became Virgin Media. So, of, of course, Virgin Media is Branson. And so he also owes me money, which he's aware of, and all the other people that didn't um, respond to the case. So basically, this effectively is a uh, debt that they owe to me. And obviously, they don't want to pay it. And so in order not to pay it, they are creating a whole lot of chaos all over the place. Um, lies, deception, treachery, um, just to evade 
liability because obviously, you know, their companies, their shareholders, once they get wind of this, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good on their reputations. So um, they are prepared to go all out to try to um, defame me, destroy me, whatever, to remove this liability. But however much they try, the reality is that they are responsible and accountable and they have to pay it, which is why I'm putting together a team of lawyers and um, enforcers to go and collect from them. Um, unfortunately, we're dealing with people that don't want to play fair. They have no respect for anybody else. They think that just by threatening and bullying people, they can get rid of their liabilities, but that is not going to work. It's not going to work. So, okay, what you're looking at here <coughs> is um, from the hearing, there were two hearings. There was one on the, I believe it was 23rd of February of 2006 and the 2nd of May, um, which is where I actually won uh, the appeal because when I got out of hiding, I, I basically, after issuing proceedings against these people, that's when all the threats started. I started being followed around. Um, and that's when it all went pear-shaped. And most of you know <clears throat> what what transpired at that time. Now, if you look here, these are some of the court references. So, um, A3-2005-2301. And those are my some of my court reference numbers. These are more court reference numbers. And they, all of these can be checked. Um, if they're not in the court, you have to ask yourself, why isn't any of this on public record? Where is it gone? Because these are all official documents. Okay, they're not stuff that I've created myself. I don't have court seals myself. This is authentic court documents prior to the actual um, hearings whereby um, I've produced my courtroom audios. So you have to ask yourself, why, if there is all this evidence, why haven't the number one honoured it? Why? Because we're talking about Lord Justices. They are the highest justices in the British courts and in the land. So, um, you know, this is not a joke. This man here is trying to turn this into some sort of a joke so that he can actually get away scot-free and continue his criminal activities. However, the reality is for him, he has to take a step back and look and actually put himself in my shoes or any of the victims that he has shoes and recognize that he himself wouldn't tolerate what he has done to me and other people. He wouldn't tolerate it. This became, Clarion NTL became um, Virgin Media. Um, there was a merger which took place and um, these companies, I think Clarion is still in existence, but NTL certainly became Virgin Media, which is um, obviously it's, it's Branson. So he's fully aware of this case as well. And he's aware that I'm owed money. He's aware that I'm authentic. He's aware that I'm telling the truth about everything I've said. And, um, you know, if he has any goodness left in him, he'll do the right thing. And the right thing is to settle this case and deal with the situation rather than actually trying to evade it by telling lies and making himself look absolutely ridiculous alongside Richard Hanna. Richard Hanna now looks like a fool. Anybody who's looked at this evidence, he looks like a complete buffoon. He's making himself look like a fool in the eyes of the public. He's trying to, you know, project that onto me, but, you know, the reality is I'm not the one who has uh, been racketeering and stealing people's documents. You know, I haven't um, got any, any of his money in my bank account. My bank account, even the little bit of money that I had has been stolen from my bank account. They've done everything in their power 
to say, see that I remain without anything so that there is no possible way that any of this can come to light. That's what they've been doing for the last 15 years. Okay, and it's not worked, and they're pissed because it hasn't worked, and they're now trying to find new ways, inventive ways, by threatening and bullying. They've sent their, their bulldog, Richard Hanna, to threaten all sorts of people to remove this evidence. This is evidence that is in the public domain. You cannot uh, threaten Google or whoever, YouTube and whoever, to take it down. It's part of the public record. It's a very important case. You know, the works, my works are all famous. It's linked to some serious um, atrocities that took place in London and other parts of the world. So therefore, it is of public record. This is factual, okay? I don't deal with things that are not factual. It's all sealed, you'll see Supreme Court. This is factual evidence. It says, upon reading the appellant notice sealed on the 14th of October 2005, filed by the claimant, which is myself, for an extension of time seeking permission to appeal from the order of Justice Blackburn on the 12th of August 2005. Now, the order of Justice Blackburn only came into pass because I went to look for my case after I got out of hiding where I had been for three months until I was smuggled to Notting Hill Gate Police Station. That is also all on public record, because there's a long criminal file. As much as there is a civil file, there is a criminal file. And I'll show you that criminal file on another video. Today we're going to deal with the facts, and just for public record, even though it's already on public record, I'm putting it on public record again, so that we can silence any form of skullduggery and the usual tactics from the usual suspects so that we can all be on the same page this is a fact these people are criminals this man Richard Hanna is a liar that has to be established okay he's an absolute liar anybody following that man has to recognize that this man is a liar and you know you need to block him if he's sending you threats send him a cease and desist notice cease and desist abusing and harassing us cease and desist your brutality cease and desist pay what you owe face the music and leave us the hell alone that's what i'm saying right now okay now this document as i said it went into the court of appeal because of the fact i went into hiding when i came out of hiding my case was nowhere so all these bundles of evidence, all these bundles that I've showed you, all of evidence were basically concealed. So I had to go to these two Lord Justices to find out why my case had been removed. And they had to look at the evidence. And this is when you will see, seeking permission to rely on the evidence here. And also I sought to get a injunction which was filed. I'd filed an injunction. I'd filed freezing injunctions um, as well on their accounts, on all my TV shows, so that they would pay me my money. But what happened was, as we now know, this was all covered up. And I was kept on a targeting program whereby I was sent death threats, followed, harassed, stalked, and have been so for the last 15 years. And it's continuing, but now it's continuing publicly. Okay? So you will see that there are various defendants out of the 10 that are missing because they were not represented. Now, it says it is ordered. This was an order by two Lord Justices. Okay, if two ju Lord Justices give an order, that means that it is has to be carried out, it should have been enforced. That the claimant's applications for permission and appeal and extension of time be granted, that's an order. The application to rely on further evidence be granted, that was an order. And that the appeal be allowed, in other words, I won. Okay, so outside of the judgment that I showed you previously, 
This is another judgment from two other judges, justices, law justices, okay? They're the highest justices in the land. <clears throat> they know their <clears throat> profession inside out. Um, so basically, effectively, they ruled again in my favor, all right? So let's look at some more things before I show you these witness statements. Okay, so this is another document. Um, showing that I am supposed to be paid. Uh, it says your claim, you will see it's Chancery Division, 7th September 2004. Your claim was issued on the 5th of August 2004. The court sent it to the defendants by first class post on the 12th of August 2004 and it will be deemed to be served on the 14th of August. The defendants had until the 28th of, October, uh, of August, sorry, 2004 to, de to reply. Now here you see they've stamped it as the 7th of September because there was no response. So in that case, so the time had been come and gone. And so the, the, the courts, they basically had up, up until that time, if no, no reply at all, you may ask the court to enter judgment for the amount to be decided by the court, completing the tear-off portion of the form. A hearing will be arranged to determine the amount the defendant should pay. That's exactly what the court case was about. The hearings that you have heard was because of the fact that the defendant was supposed to either pay an amount into the court to satisfy the claim. This is called payment in satisfaction. The court will notify you of the payment and you will have to decide whether to accept the amount offered. Nothing was offered. They could offer to pay me an amount to satisfy the claim or ask for time to pay. They didn't want to offer to pay and they didn't want to ask for time to pay. They just thought that they could terrorize me and that I would just go away. Admit liability for your claim but not offer amount in satisfaction. The court will send you a copy of the defendant's reply and you will have to decide what to do. Um, so basically you will see that these are all filled in. These have all been filled in and sent back to the court. And so this is why a hearing was organized. As you can see their deadline the reply was the 28th of August 2004. You will see it's stamped on the 7th of September, which is considerably some time after the deadline. Now this man shows up in 2018, <laughs> decades afterwards, saying, let's go to court. Or what did he say? Miscommunications or, or, or malicious communications and what happened? Okay, it cut off, so I'm not sure how much of um, what I recorded before um, is, is still there. So I'll just kind of run through this again, um, just for the avoidance of any doubt. Um, it's really important for people to understand and understand and overstand how, you know, diabolical this situation is and, and such a huge in, injustice has been perpetrated here and continues to be so in order to cover all of these, this up, you know, and this is how far people will go. They will, you know, really go out of their way to destroy you just so that they don't become accountable for their actions. And um, that's why I really want to um, get you to see as much of the information because there's a whole lot of evidence and, um, you know, it's a massive case. So there would be, and quite a lot of it has never been really put out there. And um, so I'm, I'm really doing this to give you the opportunity to see for yourself that this is not a situation of my word against Richard Hanna or anybody's. This is fact. This is fact. This is recorded historical fact. And it's a fact that makes a lot of people uncomfortable because of the consequences. 
Um, but as the judge said, you know, um, just because a whole lot of people don't want to lose, it makes no difference. It's irrelevant. This is a case that had merit. And so basically, um, we can see clearly it said the claim was issued on the 5th of August 2004. The court sent it to the defendants by first class post. That's all of the defendants were sent. Okay, from the courts, they were sent the claim and should have responded in the right time. Now it says <clears throat> it will be deemed to be served by the 14th of August 2004. The defendants have until the 28th of August to reply. Okay, now that shows you that there was not a response because it's the 7th of September. You know, they had grace period and it's 7th of September. Their deadline had passed, okay, to respond. So in the case where you have a situation where you're suing people because of the theft of your, your documents. So I was suing them for a number of things, breach of contract, um, trespass, because obviously by that time, I had all kinds of things kicking off. I had my house was being watched. I was being followed. You know, I was being sent death threats, you know, and I'll show you even if the court documents, some of the court uh, papers, the, the reference number they, they put was dead, you know. So this is the kind of people that we're dealing with. So when you see the crap that is being put out there, you have to understand the motives behind it because there's a whole lot of money involved in this case and there's a whole lot of corruption and there's a whole lot of criminality behind this case. So in order not to face that, they would much prefer to try to destroy me. But obviously, you know, I'm not going to let them do that. The evidence will speak for itself and it's on public record and it affects all of you because if you allow this man and these people to do that, we're talking about people's lives being in danger. They shouldn't be allowed to do this to anybody else. That's part of my motivation for bringing this to the public spotlight, you know. So once the defendants had until 28th of August and they didn't do so, They then have to do one of these three things. Now, this is set by the courts. It is not set by me. This is set by the courts. The, Richard Hanna and his co-conspirators could pay an amount into the court to satisfy your claim. This is called payment in satisfaction. The court will notify you of the payment, meaning me, and you will have to decide whether to accept the amount offered. They didn't want to give me one penny, and that's what all of this is about. They want to be able to never give me one penny for works that are grossing billions of pounds that have won awards. Okay, this is what it's all about. They could offer to pay do an amount to satisfy your claim or ask for time to pay. The court will send you a copy of the defendant's reply and you will have to decide what to do. I'll show you what the defendants wrote to me. They wrote me a letter with the reference dead on it. That's what they did. Admit liability. So these are the three points. Okay. Admit liability for your claim, but not offer an amount in satisfaction. The court will send you a copy of the defendant's reply and you will have to decide what you want to do next. If they don't respond, you may ask the court to enter judgment for the amount to be decided by the court. Completing the tear off portion of the form and hearing will be arranged to determine the amount the defendant should pay. That was why we had a hearing. They had already, judgment had already been issued against them because they didn't honor the case. Okay? So I signed it, filled it in. You can see the 7th of the 9th, 2004. And so the hearings before Humphrey, you can hear, are for this, which was already 
it had already lost by that point. By the time it had gone to the court hearings before um, the two Lord Justices, they were out of time. Judgment had already been entered. So for them to say that, uh, you know, I didn't win and all this stuff, that's, a, that's a, just a crock of shit. This shows you clearly that the court would never stamp this date if they had honoured and fulfilled what the court had requested them to do. The reason they didn't do it is because there were so many witnesses and they knew they were guilty. So they didn't know how to respond to this situation. So they thought, let's use bully tactics, which they're doing again now, to get rid of it. On that occasion, the bully tactics didn't work either. And it's not going to work this time either. Now you tell me if this court document being in the public domain constitutes malicious communications. So what Richard Hanna is actually effectively saying, he's saying by the truth being published that he's guilty and that he owes me money and he's guilty of all kinds of crimes against me and, and God knows how many others, that having this information in the public domain constitutes malicious communications. The guy you can see is absolutely insane can see just by looking at this document alone the man is an insane man all right so let's look at some other stuff just to just for the avoidance of doubt so that we can put this on public record and stop the bullshit okay <clears throat> the bullshit that this man is carrying on with and the harassment this man should be in a jail cell he was supposed to be many years ago and he's aware of that and so in order to prevent that, he's creating non-stop problems. The guy's got psychological, mental issues. He needs a psychiatrist and he needs the police to act and go and arrest this man and his crime ring. That's what needs to happen, okay? Again, for the avoidance of doubt, here we see Richard Hanna's name is on the court. Documents signed and sealed 5th of August 2004. So the pre previous document that I just showed you was generated from this. Okay, this is the actual claim. For significant injuries, losses, damages because of intentional deceit, which is still happening, theft, infringement and plagiarism of copyrighted multimedia production documents theft, infringement, plagiarism, misuse, and conversion of the claimant's personal copyrighted joint autobiographical book and movie scripts entitled The Walk, illicit trading of the claimant's master copyrighted multimedia production package documents provided as evidence for the proposed case. At the time, I was seeking injunctions for harassment, so this shows you when I say 15 years, this is 2004, I was trying to get injunctions for harassment. And as you can see publicly, he's still doing it. That shows you clear evidence that this man has been harassing me criminally for the last 15 years. Okay? Because this is I, the reason why I took these proceedings because of the fact that they were harassing me. All right? It's written on this. Harassment, trespass to the person, infringement of privacy, threats to the claimant's rights to safety, security, and protection. Claimant also requests injunctions to discontinue any further illicit trading and misuse of the claimant's personal joint autobiographical book and movie script, The Walk. And I'm going to show you a script, and I'm going to show you the cover of the script, and I'm also going to show you it featured on the front cover of Rupert Murdoch's, um, one of his magazines. So that you are very clear that everything I'm saying to you is factual. All these years later, the harassment has never stopped. It just gets extended from person to person. And this is what is being done to Ramola D, Alfred Weber, 
all journalists are being literally harassed to remove the evidence. This is a public case. This is a public interest case of magnitude. Okay, it's the largest case of its kind, and it has a, a it has a right to be in the public domain, and the public have a right to see what is behind all those famous shows that belong to me. They have a right to know how I was treated, how I'm being treated, and how people get treated by criminals operating within the entertainment industry, okay, who think they're untouchable. So, just to show you that Richard Hanna wasn't the only person that signed the contracts and the agreements, you can see that it was also signed by Christopher Gossage of Russell's. That's his signature, that's his name. I agree that the information I received today regarding the celebrity fitness show, copyright protected, will be treated with the strictest of confidentiality and discretion. I will not discuss, copy, duplicate, recreate information given regarding the show's title, concept, idea, format in any shape or form without consulting and gain, gaining full permission of the show's creative developer, Charles Seven, as it may result in legal action against me. And basically, it, there are a couple of these that he signed. So basically, for the production documents, as I said, they were cut up and turned into multitudes of shows. And there is a lot of evidence in regards to the negotiation process. There's emails between myself and himself. And, um, you know, the thing is, people don't sign agreements if there is nothing to sign for. You know, I want to come out of this for a minute. We can get to him in a minute. This is another document that uh, Christopher Gossage signed for. You can see his signature, his company name. I'll show you the actual. Um, letter from from Russell's. I'm including everything into this today because <clears throat> so that everybody's clear that what I state has taken place has taken place. You know, what the courts have stated has taken place has taken place. So that everybody's clear on that, okay? So let me let me just show you um the letter from Russell's. One second. So this is the letter after he signed all the agreement. And as I showed you previously, he gave me copyright um, contracts, which were signed by Hannah, copyright proof of that I was the copyright owner. And you can see clearly he, this is on the 9th of June, 2003. So this is pre the meeting with Hannah because the Han meeting with Hannah was on the 11th of November, 2003. So the first person I went to was effectively this lawyer who had set me up to make sure that my work was stolen and that I was basically. Okay, so this is the document, as I said, is the Russell document. And you can see here, it says, um, you've asked this firm to represent you in connection with the protection and commissioning of your ideas for television series. For your information, our general terms and conditions of business are attached. This man says, I will take overall responsibility for this matter. And in, a, in my absence, I propose that you, that the partner who would be responsible for taking overall charge in this matter or of this matter would be Tony English. Now it appears that he's changed his name because a lot of people from this case have actually changed their names in order to conceal what went down. And uh, so this was basically, so what you're looking at is a lawyer's firm has taken me on as a client to protect my intellectual property from theft, um, plagiarism, and to be involved in the commissioning of the ideas for my work. Now, um, as you can see, these are exhibits, part of the court case. Um, and you will see that this here is the same reference number that's on the 
confidentiality agreements that were signed with Richard Hanna. So, and obviously for the meeting with Helen Alexander. So let's bring some other documents into the fold so that we get a complete picture of what actually transpired. Okay, so this is uh, the business cards that were given to me at the meeting from the first email I showed you of Richard Hanna, where he says, Unleash Sales Hell. And he invited me to um, share my format ideas with this woman here, Helen Alexander. So you can see that the meeting took place. These cards were given to me. My lawyers gave me the contracts, the proof that I was the copyright owner of my documents. And after this meeting, this is when the actual um, documents were stolen. So you can clearly see that I met the head of factual programming. And if we go back to the email of Richard Hanna, <coughs> excuse me, if we go back to the email where you, where you see Richard Hanna on the 31st of October, wrote, which I was cc'd into, on my command, unleashed sales hell. Okay, and you can clearly see, he says, share your format ideas, so that's TV formats, um, with Helen Alexander of SMG, head of factual. So now when we see the business cards, we, this is proof that the meeting took place, and basically, I was given their business cards. Also, it's important to see, it says he, he also included this information. It, information contained in this message or any of its attachments may be confidential and, it, and is intended for the exclusive use, use of the addressees. Any disclosure, re reproduction, distribution, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, uh, he, he references Clarion Television and NTL or affiliated companies. Now that's very key because if you look at the court documents, you will see that these are the people that were party to the claim because obviously after this meeting, my documents were stolen by these people. Whatever they want to tell you, they know it's a fact. I know it's a fact. Everybody in the industry knows it's a fact, but this man thinks he can just write a lot of lies and he's going to get away with it, as if Lord Justices are fools. You know, Lord Justices don't rule in people's favour <clears throat> if the information is bullshit, if there's no evidence. You know, there's no way a Lord Justice is going to put his name and co-sign his whole career on some woman that he doesn't know from a can of paint if the information and the evidence doesn't suggest exactly what I've stated happened. They ruled in my favour because it's factually documented as to what happened. Okay, so let's show you some more stuff because it's very important that you get the full picture of what transpired so that there can be no doubt whatsoever that these people are guilty, they know they're guilty, and they're perpetrating a deception. And on top of that deception, they're actually bullying threatening people all over the place in order to conceal the truth. And they're trying to call it, what's it, uh, malicious communications. There's nothing malicious about the truth. The truth is the truth, okay? And that's what we're dealing with. What they want is for the deception to stick and for the truth to be appear as if it's lies. That's what they're trying to make happen here, but that's not what's factual. And we're dealing with what's factual. So let's not even entertain any of these people anymore. I'm going to give you the evidence, even though I've done it over and over, but I'm going to add some other pieces of evidence so that you can see clearly what transpired. So you see clearly it says, share your format ideas with Helen Alexander's SMG PLC head of factual, okay, on the 11th of November. Okay, and you've seen the contracts were signed on that day. You've seen the post office have confirmed that that work was my work that was stolen. And they wrote to the courts 
to to testify on my behalf okay because they knew me for many many years they saw me working really hard at my productions and to see it all stolen and other people claim the credit for it they were as upset as i was you know as you will see were the witnesses okay which i'm going to share with you as well so there you see head of factual programming helen alexander that's who i met and she came along with jim manson executive producer to the meeting and these were the people that stole my documents when i tried to get them back when i tried to get them to cease and desist i got death threats and it's been going on for the last 15 years okay that's a fact any suggestion that is otherwise is the bullshit that's the lies okay so let's just get that straight. Here is an e email from someone that was in, in Channel 4, because once my work was stolen and the work started emerging on billboards and magazine covers and all over the place, you know, the people that were involved, um, you know, production team that I put together were involved. I had technical people. I had um, all sorts of people were involved. And so one of the people that was doing the technical support for my own company was um, sending out emails. Lots of people were sending out emails to try to let the media know what was going on. And this is um, one of the emails that came back because by this time my work had been launched globally and so it was all these health and fitness productions were you know they chopped my work up into little pieces and they sold them to all different networks production houses and uh you know meanwhile i was put under surveillance and i'm going to show you the vans outside of my house as well i'll show you some photographs because i've got a diary of all the vans that started showing up stations outside my house that were following following me around not just outside my house if i went to visit somebody they'd be outside there as well if i went for coffee somewhere the vans would show up there it was basically the same thing was going on every day wherever i went <clears throat> so anyway i'll get to that part but just let's read this it says, hello, Martin. Yes, Charles Sevens is the same person we are aware of. I remember the name because it's distinctive. And so in order to stop my name being distinctive, what they did was they gave my name to a blonde girl and tried to create a pop band because they knew that I was a musician as well. Um, so they tried to um, give my name to somebody else so to, to, to use my identity to stop me rising basically so it says i'm afraid it's not good news charles was unfortunately set up by the lawyers from russell's tony english chris gossage richard hannah and factual head helen alexander charles's work was sold late november so i went to the meeting on the 11th of November, so if it was late November, that must have been the end of November when all the deals kicked off, to various production houses. They sold it to, they sold part of it to Tim Hinks from Endemol. Now Endemol is the company that does Big Brother, they do a lot of reality shows, so part of obviously my work was sold to them. And uh, Tim was the one who sold it to Channel 4, and that was late November time as well. Channel 4 ran Country House Hotel ad as a working title when they first got it from them. They've since changed the format's name to Fit Farm, which will be running from the 8th of March till until late May. They've also created Body On, which is which was part also ripped off from your partner's documents. So what we're talking about is a whole genre was created from my documents. It wasn't like one TV show was created or two TV shows. A whole new genre of health and fitness based reality shows using dance, 
using, you know, health, like you are what you eat, 10 years younger. In 10 years younger, they go into the streets and they ask, how old do you think this person is? Which is all based on me because nobody could believe that my age is what my age is. And that's why they created those formats because it was designed to rub it in my face. You know, they have formats like The Biggest Loser, which is another kind of ha, 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 you're a loser kind of thing. Um, so they made a lot of productions to also kind of mock the fact that they'd stolen all of this work and they were raking in millions and millions of pounds and getting rich on it, you know. And so um, that's part of the way that these people roll. You know, they don't just want to rip you off and steal from you. They want to mock and abuse, harass, terrorize. This is the culture. You know, this is the culture. And then they'll turn up and say, oh, she's a liar and she's a this and she's a that. They'll invent all sort of things about you in order to smear you and make you look like you're some sort of a liar or what have you. But this is a game that they've played from time immemorial. The only difference is now we have evidence to show the game how it's played out and has been played out for to many, many creative people in the industry. You know, that's that's standard. Everybody knows that they rip people off every day of the week, you know. Um, but this is a, a case whereby it's been through the court system, judges ruled in my favour, and they've continued the abuse. They haven't um, respected any of the judge's orders, they've sought to cover them up and try to malign me and continuously harass and terrorize me in order to shut my mouth. Now who's going to do that? Who's going to shut their mouth when this kind of thing is being done to you? Sorry, not going to happen. You owe me money, you owe me an apology, you need to credit my work. That's what it's about and that's going to continue to be the, the situation for me until they pay up, you know, and that's what my emphasis is right now, because this is a horror story, and this type of horror is being done to people all over the world by these brutes, you know, these are people that really don't care who they tread on, they don't care whose lives they destroy, as long as they can win, and as long as they can get money out of you for nothing, that's what it's all about for these people, and so for me, I want to see that this sort of thing never happens again. You know, there needs to be reforms to make sure that they don't do this to people because it's just plain wrong. You can't treat people in this way and expect to get away with it by threatening people. No, no can do. So, it says the rollout for the project was millions, which is why I can't understand why they don't want to pay her. But you're quite right, it's done all the time. That's a fact, okay? All through this document, you'll see it's all facts. So let me show you. Okay, um, just to conclude this, I was going to just cut it off and move on, but, you know, there's some interesting things in here. Um, it says, the rollout for the project was millions, which is why I can't understand why they don't want to pay her. But you're quite right, it's done all the time. They ha they do have mass pitching sessions just to nick people's work ideas. That show, show Boys and Girls, that was screened last year, was also ripped off. Okay, God knows who's the creator of that show. Um, but there are so many cases of this happening, you know. For them to try to make out that none of it is true when there's so much evidence, it's just... It's just disgusting. It really is disgusting how these people behave. It says, uh, I can tell you for a fact, neither Endemo or Channel 4 had any formats like your partners. Believe me, if they did, they would have already been in production a long time ago. Channel 4 are desperate for lifestyle related formats because they make the most money and pull in the most ratings. That's what it's all about with these people. Endemol are one of the big, largest international production companies, so your partner's work is likely to have been sold worldwide by now. Shame I didn't see your email before. You are dealing with power-mad, 
very ruthless people, as you said yourself. They don't care who they trample over. Your partner's stolen documents have brought in masses of revenue and made the people involved seriously rich. I don't think they have any intention of paying Charles anything. Now, let's look at the date of this. This is on the 7th of March, 2004. What's the date today? This date is, I think it's the 18th of November, 2018. So that statement is a fact. They don't have any intention of paying. And this is what we have to go through just to get our money from these people. Is that right? All of you people who are watching that, do you th watching this video today, do you think that's right? Do you think that they have a right to do this, th this kind of abuse to people? No, they don't. No, they don't. And they think they can terrorize you. <clears throat> Richard Hanna wrote something about, oh, she's go I'm going to put her in prison and all this sort of stuff. Just to cover up his ass. This is the kind of monsters we're dealing with. They will do anything to get rid of you just so that they can have the money that they know is yours. This is the kind of brute mentality that we're dealing with. You need to get a good lawyer. Try Allspang. They have a good reputation, but be careful who you talk to. They deconstructed your partner's work to maximize profits and prevent Charles from making any claims. I agree it's organized crime because it's premeditated. You should go to the press. Do you see what I've lived with? This is what I've lived with for 15 years. Okay, and this man has got the damn cheek to turn up all these years later after the fact, after he's been spending my money brutalizing people with the money, going around posturing himself like he's some important person. And this is what, what he thinks I'm going to put up with. Sorry, I'm not going to put up with it. No, I'm not. I can't go home to my house because of this situation. I have to have alarms put on my windows because of these people. Fifteen years later, this is still what's going on. Is that right? Does that sound right to any of you? Hmm. Okay, so let's look at some more documents. I'm going to cram in as much as possible because I really want to make this comprehensive enough for you to see very, very clearly when you read this man's lies to see what kind of nasty person you're dealing with. This is a man that should be in prison years ago. And because he knows that, He's going out of his way to try to destroy anybody who's putting the inf information, the evidence out. He's paying people left, right and center to write lies. Anybody that you see that says, oh, we don't think Charles is credible. You have to question who is that person? Who is that person and what, who, what, who's paying them? That's the question mark. Who's paying them? That's what you have to question. Anybody who says this is not credible, you have to ask yourself who they really are. Because I guarantee you, when you dig a little bit further, you'll see that this person, that whoever is stating that, has got stuff to hide themselves. Okay, they've got a part to play in this filth. Yeah? So now, here's you, here you see, this is a confidentiality disclaimer that I put together for Tamsin Allen, who's of Byman and Partners, and the date was the 19th of the 2nd, 2004. So basically, this is me going to the lawyers, Byman and Partners, about the case against Scottish Media Group, Clarion, NTL, and Russells. So basically, Russells are my lawyers. This is Richard Hanna's company, which has become Virgin. And, and SMB, SMG is Helen Alexander and um, James Manson's companies. So I go to see her and I create this confidentiality agreement because it came to my attention that this was big news all over the mainstream media. Everybody knew that I was being literally brutalized for my intellectual property. 
and they said be very very careful who you speak to so i put this together and i had it on a floppy disk in case you wanted to change any of these clauses and it can see what the clauses are we write to confirm the following terms of your company's engagement with the proposed case so this is the case against all of these individuals all right because i've explained this but obviously Evidence doesn't lie. So let's look at the evidence. What well, it keeps getting smaller. I want to make it as big as possible so that you can read it for yourself. You can freeze it and have a read of it. But it says, um, number one, the information disclosed to you is of strictest confidence and in consideration of disclosing the nature and existence of this related matter that you hereby acknowledge and agree that such information must by all your partners, colleagues and employees be treated as such. The case in question encloses valuable and confidential information which any unauthorized disclosure or use of will cause us or our case irreparable harm and significant injuries for which money damages alone will not be sufficient. The information and evidence relating related regarding the above named case will be treated by you and your signatories to this agreement with the absolute strictest of confidence neither you or your servants officers directors agents colleagues employees will leak divulge disseminate reproduce publish communicate disclose exploit or relate any of the disclosed information nor in any way deal with this case to any third parties or members of the opposing side any press or any other authorities without getting written confirmation from ourselves mentioned herein nor will you act in any way so that such divulsion dissemination reproduction publication communication disclosure exploitation or any other illegitimate dealing is likely if it is necessary for you to disclose any of the information and the evidence disclosed to you or any of your employers or third parties, you will first consult us of this and let us have written confirmation of such employees, third parties and provided we approve such disclosure, you will notify them of the confidential nature of the case and arrange to procure that all such parties, third parties, barristers, and all legal representatives shall shine, sign a letter of confidentiality in exactly the same terms as you contained herein, or will acknowledge that they are legally bound by such terms of confidentiality by this agreement. So basically, what you're seeing here, in short, I mean, it's unnecessary to go through all of it, but you get the gist. Basically, this is an agreement that I put together for Hams and Allen because of the fact that what happens in many cases, especially when they're large cases like mine, and there's a lot of money involved, and the work is very famous, and people are getting rich, and they're getting nasty, and they're getting ruthless, when you go and see a lawyer with your evidence, um, what will happen is that they will contact the party that you're suing and actually broker a deal with that person to shaft you. So what I tried to do was to, you know, because she was encouraging me, Tamsin Allen was encouraging me to go to her offices and attend the meeting that she was really interested in the case. And uh, anybody who knows anything about media lawyers they're some of the most corrupt lawyers that there are um not uh withstanding that other kinds of lawyers are just as corrupt but you know media lawyers where there's a lot of money usually there's a lot of corruption that's just a standard practice unfortunately um so basically this agreement shows you a little bit of the motive if you're a lawyer of a law firm and you not only are disclosing confidential information to the parties being sued but also you've stolen um information from that person and you've sold it the penalty of that 
not only will you be struck off, you will face prison. So when you're looking at a case like this and you look at all the parties, we're talking about CEOs, we're talking about heads of companies, we're talking about big reputable law firms, supposedly reputable law firms. None of them are reputable. But on, you know, on the tin, if you like, they advertise themselves to be reputable, although they're highly corrupt. I mean, Byman and Partners have come up in a number of cases as being very extremely corrupt in their dealings with the public and dealings with uh, clients, etc. So obviously, when you're dealing with the fact that you know this person has basically seen the agreement, that's her signature at the bottom here. Let's see if I can make that bigger so you can see her signature. Okay, so there's Tams and Allen's signature, and uh, you will see it says that uh, you will on no accounts or occasions take any unsolicited favours or financial offers of any sort whilst engaging in this case and will not deliberately set out to lose or prolong the case to favour or benefit any of the opposing parties or companies involved or any of the legal representatives or, or officials representing the named above opponents or correspondence with the opposing parties representatives must be above board and openly disclosed to us and you will agree that by not doing so will be breaching your duty of care to us as your clients and breaching the terms of strictest confidentiality set out herein and recognize that legal action will be taken against you and any of your employer, employees, colleagues, third parties and signatories. Now she signed this. Now this was actually on a floppy disk. I know it sounds ancient, but it's the truth. In 2004, I had an old computer where I still used floppy disks. Proudly so. And so um, basically, I had drafted this myself. And when I attended the meeting, I printed this out. But I brought along the the, uh, the floppy disk so that if she wanted to change any of these clauses she had the opportunity to do so because I wanted to make sure that before I disclosed what evidence I had that she signed and agreed that she was going to behave confidential, uh, confidentially. I mean lawyers automatically are supposed to have confidentiality but most people are aware that most lawyers are liars. It comes as standard. They do not keep their oath. As long as there's money to be made, they will shaft you. That's just the reality of the way it works in the real world. So as a mechanism to prevent that from happening, because I'd seen it repeatedly happen, I thought, okay, let me draft this. If she doesn't want to sign this, if she wants to take the case, she'll have to basically She'll have to sign one of these before I will disclose anything. Okay, um, as I was saying, and it cut off. I don't quite know where it cut off, so I'm going to try to just fill in any gaps that I might have missed. Um, so the point that <clears throat> to establish here was this document was created by myself um, for a meeting with Tams and Allen at Byman and Partners on the 19th of February 2004, um, because she basically expressed an interest in taking on the case after my um, documents were stolen by Helen Alexander, Richard Hanna, and uh, with the uh, collusion of my lawyers called Russell's at the time and uh, obviously the work was being sold very aggressively um, around the world and um, contracts had been signed so I had quite a lot of evidence I had emails to show that there was um, negotiations taking place for the sale of the work um, which I will put up at some stage uh, I'm trying not to make it too, too long because I want the emphasis really to be on the witness statements after I show you these documents. 
Um, but the point to be made, made is the point of this document was to protect myself because it was very well known what was going on um, in, in terms of the law, legal world. You know, most people that I went to see were fully aware of what was being done to me and were looking to cash in. Also within the media, lots of people knew within media production houses that because, I mean, we're talking about shows being sold all over the world in 126 countries for, you know, massive deals. You know, the monetary deals that were being done with my work was literally staggering at the time. And so there was, you know, a note of caution that people were alerting me to. You know, if you go to see anybody, they're going to sell your evidence because, number one, there are lawyers involved in the case. Number two, we're talking about telecommunications companies. We're talking about, you know, this is where the phone tapping side of it was at that time very aggressive. We're talking about media production houses and people with a lot of economic um, bargaining position, much more so than myself. So I was trying to really protect myself and take heed of the advice that had been given to me, which is why I created this document in the first place. And just to recap, um, Section 4, without prejudice for the avoidance of doubt, you agree to act always in our best interests at all times and will not do anything that breaches your duty of care whilst ass assessing the merits of the case in question. Or if we become your clients, you will on no accounts or occasions take any unsolicited favours or financial offers of any sorts while engaging in this case and will not deliberately set out to lose or prolong the case to favour or benefit the opposing parties or companies involved or any of the legal representatives or officials representing the named above opponents. All correspondence with the opposing parties and representatives must be above board openly disclosed to us and you will agree by not doing so you will be breaching your duty of care as your clients breaching terms of strictest confidentiality set out here in recognized legal action will be taken against you and your employees third parties and signatories which is exactly what transpired as we all know now the point that is very important to stress here, I did try to stress it before, but I'm not sure if it captured it, so I'm going to repeat it in case it didn't capture it on the video, because I'm, I'm not going to rewind and chop, I'm just going to link them together and put it out, because of time, I just don't have the time really. Um, when I do my shows, they'll be creatively um, done, but for, this, for the purpose of this, this is more or less a testimony and um, for the record, for the public record, so that people can understand a little bit more detail about the case and have an in, understanding of what, what the motives are behind the aggressive levels of abuse that I've endured for the last 15 years. Um, you know, money's always at the root of evil, you know, and in this case, it's a whole lot of money. And when there's a whole lot of money, there's a whole lot of lies. You know, when people are getting rich off your back, you know, they're going to lie, 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 lie. And that's what we're witnessing right now. But obviously, you know, I don't have to tolerate it. And I'm going to ensure that the law is enforced on this occasion, you know. Anyway, Tamsin Allen is a lawyer who outside of all this has a duty of care to clients she's forbidden to do any of what is written here now in the event that she has engaged in all of this uh, uh, besides the fact that she's signed a contract that she wouldn't do so she knows the consequences we're talking about lawyers 
and people who are officials and you know deal with lawyers all day of the week they know the consequences of what they've engaged in and when you understand the consequences you understand the motives behind why they will do anything to shut the truth up because the implications for them you know outside of the money laundering side and 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 you know racketeering with a client's stolen intellectual property to get yourself rich i mean that's a jail sentence right there okay so if we start looking at some of the things that are written in there which this woman has engaged in she um as soon as she signed this contract she kept she stole my floppy disk which had a, a script on it including this document which was on it at the time it also included my script the walk and i'm going to show you that in a minute now the key thing to rep remember um these people represented people in the media they represented BBC, they represented prior to me being there. And so she was able to take the information that was on my floppy disk and immediately um, forward it on to the parties that were already chopping up my multimedia platform that was stolen and selling it all over the world and, and basically jump on the bandwagon. And so what she did, she actually took the script, sold it off to become campaigns, because the whole principle behind the walk, which was an autobiographical story of my friend. I wrote it, but it was her true story. And I'm going to read her statement to you as well as other statements. And what this woman did which she knows is completely illegal she and not just illegal we're talking criminal here so you because you have to understand to in order to understand what later on transpired first of all you have to understand the monetary side of this the scale of it and to look at all the shows and look at how much they've grossed you know and you have to understand that these are people who have sworn sworn oaths to do to to not do what they have done and they have a very very clear understanding of the consequences you know those right there show you what the motives are behind engineering some of the atrocities that we've seen you know to keep this filth hidden you know when people are caught up in criminal enterprises and, and corruption on a deep level whereby they're seriously implicated and they could go to prison their organizations can be shut down you know you're talking about serious consequences here those people will do literally anything to shut the truth down you have to understand that it's not even rocket science it's just the way i guess it's even human nature you know people have done so much wrong so many crimes and they don't want people to know that they're engaged in these things they're going to engage in all kind of practices in order to conceal it and cover it up and that's what we're witnessing and that's what we have witnessed transpire with this case now in terms and Allah's situation she sold part of my script to the bbc who they were representing anyway because um, obviously Helen Alexander and Richard Hanna and uh, Russells had already sold, and sold part of my multimedia platform as different shows to different companies whereby BBC got a, a good portion of my stolen intellectual property and they have benefited from it for a long time. Uh, as well as ITV networks, Scottish media groups who are affiliated with the ITV network. They're now called STV. And um, they're also Grampian, Granada, and then you've got Channel 4, Endymol. These are all major corporations <clears throat> that have all participated in this situation. 
and they all stand to be maligned, you know, and, and have their reputations put out there, which they will fight too for now not to do. So obviously that right there shows you the motive of why they would engage in the atrocities against me and against others to, to try to cover up, up their criminality, you know. So part of my script was sold as um, The Walk, which turned up on Rupert, Bur Rupert Murdoch's uh, News of the World. I'll show you that in a second. It also was turned into an international campaign, um, inviting people to go on the walk. It also emerged as a competition called Finish This, because they only had so much of my script, which was on the um, floppy disk. And so they got famous authors and, and built a whole competition around the stolen script. And they in, 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 they roped in famous, fam very famous authors. And the, you can actually um, look up the competition, finish this, end of story. And the end of story was basically the end, getting other authors to finish off my stolen script, stolen by Times and Allen. And she knows this is true. She knows exactly what she's done. And, uh, you know, she doesn't want anybody else to know it, you know. Um, so anyway, this is a page of, you can see, because of the numbers, they're part of the pagination of the case. And so this was part of the exhibits that went into the court. So I'll just show you the actual cover of the script and where it emerged. Okay, so this is my script, um, The Walk. Oops, it's, um, basically, my friend Christine went on the walk with somebody called Mark. And it's, some chapters are dedicated to Rachel and Pops Vital, who happen to be the parents of Marjorie and Ernie Vital that died within Grenfell Tower or were murdered within Grenfell Tower, burnt alive in the most horrific way possible. And uh, this was what was on the floppy disk and emerged shortly after my meeting with Tams and Allen. I'll just show it to you on the cover. And they didn't even change the names of the characters because they wanted it to be known that they were abusing me in the most horrific way possible. Okay, so this is the News of the World paper, and if you look at the date, you see February to March 2005. So, you know, it's basically a year after where they put this in production, and there's my script, The Walk. And the two characters were, she was called Christine, just like my friend. And he was called Mark, just like the real people in my script. You know, um, they basically rub it in my face, you know. Yeah, um, just to finish on this particular document. You see, uh, this was News of the World, who were very much involved in the hacking scandal. And you'll see that my work, was obviously um, deals were done with News of the World to promote it. So um, that's very key. And also you will notice um, that Tams and Allen, if you look into who she is, she was very much one of the lawyers that were involved in the hacking scandal. <clears throat> Little did the people know that she was involved in the actual crimes themselves. You know, they were hacking me to steal my intellectual property. And, you know, so that's how they double up. So they commit the crimes and then they send in these same lawyers to mop it up. You know, <clears throat> this is typical of the kind of um, behavior that goes on. So um, anyway, that's one document. And let me come out of here. Now, 
this is uh, my work on the front cover when Richard Hanna and Helen Alexander and James Manson and Russells had engaged in the first deals. If we look at the, the, <clears throat> the date, you will see it is January of 2004. <clears throat> so this is published, if you remember, I went to the meeting on the 11th of November. And by December, it started to emerge as advertised on different networks all over the world. And this is where we see in January, my concept is now featured health special fitness made easy from boxing to belly dancing, triathlon to Tai Chi, how to make the fat burn fun, which was my whole concept, you know, um, there was different aspects to the concept, um, using dance, using all sorts of things to make fitness fun and easy. Because as I've explained before, my brother died at the age of 30. And that was the main reason for me coming up with the concept. I was already in the entertainment industry as a musician. Um, but after my brother died, I, I become became very motivated to do something in the entertainment industry to uh, revolutionize the way that we address health <clears throat> and fitness using celebrities and, you know, um, and these shows were stolen and sold all over the world. Now, the follow-up to this, um, my work featuring on the front cover, was make money fast by scams and schemes. So this is where they are gloating. And it's very important to um, reference that uh, Scottish media group were very much involved with the Time Out magazine at the time. And that was also part of the, the case evidence to show causal links, how my work became from the stolen documents where they emerged, I, I actually showed how they went from one place to another. And it's very easy for these people, it's just a telephone call. So now we see mid-January, so that's the beginning of January 2004. This is mid-January, where now we see they're publicizing how to make money fast, scamming and scheming, which is essentially they were gloating because they were making so much money that it was, um, unprecedented. Um, so let's have a look at what else happened at the same time. So here we see <clears throat> November when they knew that I was actually taking court proceedings. They sent me letters with the reference number D-E-A-D, -E dead, basically. And these people, you know, wrote on behalf of Richard Hanna. Okay, he didn't actually um, acknowledge the claim, as you can see <clears throat> from the evidence. Um, and if you listen to the court audios, you can see that he was never part of the proceedings because obviously there was too much evidence. There was contracts that he signed and, um, you know, there was a lot of information and evidence to show that he was directly responsible for what took place which is why he's directly going out of his way to try to shut the truth down. Um, and the way that he sought to deal with it was by sending, and he's pretty much doing the same thing now. He's actually threatening people, bullying people, threatening people with court. <clears throat> this is a man that was taken to court, bear in mind, who didn't show up in court. Instead, he sent letters with the reference dead. And I want you to see that very clearly. Let me see if I can make it even bigger than it is. Oops, sorry about this. See if I can make it even bigger. And you can see very clearly, E-E-A-D, dead. And you'll see that again, it's Richard Hannon. <coughs> 
this this lawyer Charles Russell and if you understand who the Russell group are that's uh you know been flagged up by other people as um a mafia cartel um that are engaged in all kinds of filth so you know here you go which is why <clears throat> This man currently is fighting tooth from nail to try to silence all of this. So let's let's have a look at. Sorry, I just cut cut it off there, but let's have a look at um, what actually happened with NTL, that company, and what transpired after these deals. Because when I got to the meeting, they had actually. And empty facilities. I wasn't made privy to that. We weren't made privy to the fact that NTL were literally an empty facilities. We had walked into a brand new facilities at the time that had just been built. They still had plastic on the chairs. It was huge. It's a huge, huge place. Loads of offices. They had satellite rooms. They had uh, all kinds of technology which is now currently we're seeing being used in the targeting operations against individuals. And uh, I was shown this technology and I said, why is this place empty? And he said, well, we did a deal to build the facilities or a deal had been struck with Japanese people to build the facilities and they lost the deal to Sky because they wanted to, um, they had built it specifically to control all the sporting events but once they lost the deal to sky the place was just left empty and they didn't know what to do with it and in walks me with this new concept for health and fitness and bingo and that's basically what began the nightmare that i have uh, had to endure for the last 15 years they all know this is fact you know they all know it However, they won't say it because it means that they're going to seal their own fate and they don't want that. You know, they'd much rather smear me and smear anybody or kill or whatever they have to do, what they feel they have to do to keep all of this hidden. So you'll see that's the date, 24th of November. Dead. And so this is the kind of way that they mop up their filth. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at uh, some more evidence. So here we see what later transpires. If you look at the date, it's the 1st of December 2004. Now this empty facilities that I was taken to has now done agree an agreement to sell for 1.27 billion. Now, bear in mind, when I went to these facilities, they were completely empty and they had lost the deal to Sky. And so they didn't have anything until I walked in there. And then all of a sudden, they have some of the biggest deals that had ever happened worldwide to promote all these new productions. Yeah. And so let's look at some other exhibits. All of these are court exhibits, by the way. If you look at the bottom, you can tell that they're court exhibits because they'll be paginated with the numbers and it says exhibit, etc. <clears throat> so here we see that um, in September 2004, um, just under a year later from me being taken there in November the 11th, 2003, we see that NTL now takes control of VirginNet. Cable firm NTL is taking control of VirginNet, the UK's fifth largest internet service, and um, launched joint venture I mean, a lot of these dates are fictitious in order to bluff their way out of it. But the reality is the dates of this being public, publicized is this date here. 
these are the dates that you have to pay attention to because when you're dealing with fraud and racketeering they will change the date they'll backdate things to to throw people off where the money's coming from how the money was generated particularly as there's now a court case so if you re remember i issued proceedings in august 2000 and five or four sorry on the 5th of august 2004 so obviously there was a lot of scurrying because obviously once you start going into the court arena um you know people were wanting to just get rid of it get rid of it you know shut it all down so that nobody could trace have a paper trail of where all this money was coming from um so Basically, that's what was transpiring. NTL had taken control of Virgin, and now they've since rebranded as Virgin Media. And obviously, we know that Virgin Media has become Virgin Health and all these other things that have transpired, Virgin Health and Fitness and what have you. And it's all of the back of this racketeering operation. You know, no doubt there's other people that were scammed as well. But um, this, what happened to me was a huge stake, you know. And you got to understand as well that, that a lot of these companies have subs, um, shareholders. They don't want their shareholders having to get wind of all this. And as the publicity has been growing about the truth, people are starting to ask questions and people are connecting dots. So they need to make it all go away and the quickest way to do that for them is to start threatening journalists and try to brand me as some sort of liar you know this is what they do so yeah so basically you'll see the date of the real it was actually these are the release dates 1st of december 2004 so what you often see in fraud cases with these big corporations is that they change the dates um, in order to cover up the paper trail and this is what has transpired in this particular case because when you see all the press releases in the related related to what actually transpired you'll see the real dates are 2004 exactly at the same time and this is all from the fraud of my work being chopped up and sold to 126 countries. And I'll go back to the poster so that you can have a look at what part of that looks like. Okay, so this is some of my famous work on the front covers. So that's Fit Farm. This is uh, To Do of the Walk. That was the campaign. Um, this was uh, At Home Concepts, part of my stolen documents the fit farm diet doctors dancing on ice dancing with stars strictly come dancing <clears throat> dance fever you are what you eat 10 years younger let me see if i can make it even bigger um but you get the idea this is money here big money okay and this is not even one percent 